Hey guys, welcome back to another painting video. Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm painting Megumin from Konosuba. This is a painting I've been meaning to get around to tackling for a while now, but hey, here we are now and I'm, I'm really excited. I got some really good ideas that I'm eager to try out. We're going to be using Clip Studio Paint for this project, and I'll have a few art tips at the end of the video if you want to stick around for those. But for now, let's get started. Now looking at this artwork, I have one primary thought. That is to balance Megumin with an explosion. Those are my characters I want to feature in this artwork. However, the issue I'm running into is that both are competing for the role of primary character. And while definitely a doable concept, it can be a lot more difficult to balance a scene with two primary characters. And that is where painting these little box sketches can be really helpful. Because without investing too much time in any one of them, I can try out a ton of different concepts. But I'm not rushing either. I'm making sure to give each of these concept sketches its own devoted attention to making sure I bring out the beauty and potential within the scene. In fact, I really liked this concept. To have Megumin collapsed on the ground, exhausted after having just casted Explosion, looking right at the camera with this gleeful look on her face, clearly a little tired having fallen on the ground, but giving room on the canvas for the explosion to stand on its own in the background. And while I honestly really liked that concept, I found myself being torn between picking just one of these sketches to move forward with in this artwork. My next concept also really got a good start with having a crossover between Cleave from Genshin Impact and Megumin. This would be based around the concept that Megumin just casted Explosion is now exhausted, leaning on her staff as sort of a crutch. And Klee just having this absolutely adorable admiration and fascination in her eyes as she looks up at Megumin. Honestly, the concept has no right being that cute and adorable set to the backdrop of a massive explosion. But ultimately, introducing a third primary character when I'm already struggling with the first two and finding the right balance for them would inevitably diminish the impactfulness of the explosion in the scene. Which is something pointed out to me by some friends I asked for some advice. Their feedback was gold. It made me realize just how big of a deal the explosion should be in this artwork and not just pushed into being a secondary element. Throughout this artwork, I actually leaned on them for advice and help along the way, showing them work in progress snapshots and really bouncing a lot of my ideas off of them. And I wanna give a really heartfelt thank you to them for taking the time to give me their honest opinions and working through these issues with me. We definitely had some different ideas going into this artwork and we brainstormed it out. I pushed for having Megumin's expression and eye contact with the camera, but they accurately highlighted the importance of Megumin's flashy posing while she casts Explosion. While I agreed with everything they said, the core issue I couldn't reconcile was my desire to focus the scene on Megumin's face while simultaneously capturing the explosion in frame. It can actually be a very good thought exercise for your creativity. Visualize two competing elements for a scene's focus and try to come up with different ways of combining those two elements within the confines of an artistic composition. Let me tell you, it's not always easy as you might think and can push you into creatively seeking out ways of visualizing your scene. The issue here is Megumin characteristically making a flashy pose during her casting of Explosion. That means the explosion is happening in front of her, but by focusing the camera 
on her face? That places our point of view in between the explosion and Megumin, meaning that you can't make the scene look at both at the same time. Unless, of course, you do one of those fancy 360 degree paintings, which I I did briefly consider doing, although I decided not to. Now I did work out a compromise, which is what I'm painting now, and ultimately ended up settling on. My conclusion was to shift the timing so Megamine isn't casting Explosion, but instead has just finished casting Explosion, and has pridefully, and with a show-off attitude, spun around to pose for her audience in front of the explosion. It's not a perfect solution. As my friends pointed out to me, it loses a lot of the raw power the scene would have had had it been captured at the moment Megumin casted Explosion. But this was what I ended up settling on to check all the boxes that I wanted to for this painting. At the end of the day, regardless of what you're working on, I've always felt that if you're struggling with overcoming an obstacle, you should always seek out the advice of others. Someone you trust to give you their honest opinion, even in a field outside of their expertise, is someone you should value. And in that situation, you should always be open to hearing someone else's reasoning. After all, if you already had all the right answers, you wouldn't be asking for a second opinion in the first place. So try to be open and entertain what they have to say, even if it might disagree with what your initial thoughts were. Remember, they're taking time out of their day to give you advice on your problem. So always make sure they feel appreciated for the effort they took. This artwork would have turned out significantly different had I not gone to my friends for advice. And I'm both very thankful for their input and happy with the changes. And even if I didn't heed all of their ideas, it was all valued. But I'm curious, if the decision was in your hands, which of the concept sketches would you have settled on? And what changes might you have made? Working on the face here, I tried out a few different expressions off camera. Uh, I generated some different ideas using some stable diffusion and really just experimented with alternate ways of delivering on a prideful and joyful, happy expression and trying to just mix together those different emotions in different ways. I didn't want to just jump to my first conclusion and move forward with that. It's a good idea that when you have an area of your painting that you're a little unsure of exactly how you want to progress, that you slow down for a second and maybe think about, well, what are the other approaches that you might be able to take to it? Things like stable diffusion can definitely come in handy during the experimentation phase and be able to generate you some alternate ideas, even if you only use it as a reference, like I do. It can still be very useful. At the same time, I also bounced more ideas off my friends and really settled in on something I was happy with here.
I've currently framed up the scene in such a way that Megumin has her staff behind her back. I wanted it in frame so that I can really go in there at this stage in just a second and really bump up the effect quality right around the orb. I really wanted it to stand out as something that was eye-catching. And I did that with a combination of an overlay layer, a screen layer, and a normal layer. Uh, all of the blending modes, I painted them in, and then I came back in with Liquify and really swirled it around and changed up the pattern. And just went kind of nuts with it, just tried out different patterns until I was, you know, happy with it looking like a chaotic fire emanating from the orb. But uh, not something I had done before, and I'm quite happy with how that experiment turned out. It's really worth taking the time in whatever art software you work in to go and learn all the effects and blending modes that you have access to. That way you know what you have available and you're at least somewhat familiar with what they're capable of. That way you can freestyle your own way of approaching certain challenges in certain artworks and not feel overwhelmed when you're already dealing with a big project. You'll at least go into it knowing you know the tools that are capable of accomplishing the goal you're aiming for. Even if you still have to figure out, you know, some of the small details on the spot. A lot of my workflow involves thinking on my feet. I oftentimes do not have a plan going into an artwork beyond what I want my goal to be, but the steps along the way are something I really have to freestyle as I go. Whether that's the blending modes I choose to use, or whether or not to throw in some outlines at the very last second because the character wasn't uh, quite popping well enough. And all done. That is looking pretty good. Before we wrap things up, I did promise you all some art tips, so let's go ahead and jump into those. First off, I wanna talk about those outlines that I added during the final stage of this artwork because they can really add some nice separation between your character and the background for those paintings that need it. Even if you're dealing with an art style that is semi-realistic like mine, Adding in just a little hint of an outline can add that extra separation to make your character pop in that way that is oh so nice. And if your art style already has outlines in it, try making the outlines around the outer edge of your character just a little bit thicker than everywhere else. As a bonus tip, try varying your line thickness. Adding in that extra variety can make it so that your character has more life and is more interesting to look at. Next, I'm going to show you how I made that chaotic flame effect. And best part is it only takes three layers and a little bit of liquify to make it happen. On the first layer, use bright yellows and oranges to paint wispy brushstrokes. Set the second layer's blending mode to screen and add in a soft glow near the flame's core. And finally, set the third layer's blending mode to overlay and paint a red aura around the flame. Now to wrap things up, you're going to want to use the liquify tool, one of my favorites, and select all three layers and use it to push and pull the design into its chaotic flame form. And keep in mind that the results from this final step may vary depending on your software's liquify tool. For reference, I'm using Clip Studio Paint here. Well, I hope those art tips serve you well. My question for all of you is who is your favorite explosion themed character? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments as well as any questions you might have about today's painting process. As for our next artwork, grab your wetsuits. We're heading to Fontaine. That's right, I figured it's been a while since I painted a Genshin character, so I decided to paint two of them. I even made an entirely new brush set to capture their ruggedly good looks. To be straightforward, the new brushes are for their skin texture and five o'clock shadow. 
and they worked great. Seriously, they are perfect. And I don't think you're going to be able to guess where I sourced those skin textures from. Because it's not something I would have expected to be able to turn into a skin texture so well. But if you have a guess or two, feel free to let me know. Who knows, maybe one of you will actually get it right. But I don't think so. Of course, I will talk about it when we get to that video. But for now, that is going to be all for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this one right here, because that is our previous episode where we painted Silver Wolf from Star Rail. Turned out absolutely gorgeous. And I even threw in a little animation on the artwork too, just for fun. Anyways, thank you all for joining me today for this speed painting. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.